Capricorn. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for January of 2022. Well, Capricorn, it's your birthday month. If you're a sun sign Capricorn, it's your birthday month. And even if you're a Capricorn rising, the sun is passing through your first house. So it's all about you, which is fantastic, right? And uh, if you are a sun sign Capricorn, then you're due for your yearly birthday reading, possibly overdue. It's time to put some really good quality attention on yourself and let other people pay attention to you, right? So you can find a link for that in the YouTube description below, or you can find our services page on our website, pandoraastrology.com. And treat yourself, please. Um, so I want to show you, though, something uh, that I think is really important, I think you're going to care about which is that series is retrograde and it begins the month retrograde. You can see it uh, right here. And it actually went retrograde in your sixth house back in October, on October 6th. And, um, and it's going to be retrograde for a long time, a total of uh, about 14 and a half weeks from that point, October 6th, which means that it's going direct in the middle of January. Woohoo! Maybe it'll even be direct in your birthday chart. That would be fantastic. Um, so when series went retrograde, um, you probably started worrying about money, most particularly on the job. You may have started worrying about how much you're being paid or whether what you're being paid is going to work for your budget at home. And, um, and what's going on is this is a process that is taking you back to um, a place that you've been before around your confidence in your value. And that is because Ceres in its retrograde journey has left worrisome Gemini and retrograded back into back to basics, no nonsense Taurus, which is also your fifth house of confidence. So at this point, uh, we've arrived in January of 2022, and uh, while there was probably a peak of worry and upset in November on the 26th, and I think, Julia, you said that there was like um, a financial crash. Yeah, the stock market dropped a few hundred points. Yeah, Ugh. so uh, that was, you know, definitely a peak in the anxiety for all of us. And, uh, and for you, that may, it may have really hit you that, you know, maybe if you see a clientele uh, and you serve people one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you need to like raise your rates to make your budget, you know, or um, maybe you just need to understand how you can bring more value on the job or get other people to see the value that you're bringing on the job so that you can ask for a raise. This is all part of that process. So uh, Ceres has arrived back in the fifth house, which is a house of self-confidence. And, um, and this is a really good time to take your reevaluation into, you know, what are the fundamentals? What are the basics regarding Ceres things in your life, which is food, body, and money? So go back to the basics about your physical self-care. Are you doing all of the health routines that you know you need to be doing to maintain this body? Also, Go back to the basics about food and how you eat. Your body will tell you whether it likes what you're putting into it. And putting bad things into your body over time, well, it's not good, right? So it's time to go back to the basics. And, uh, and then when it comes to your money as well, go back to the basics with your budget, with how you handle your money, how you run your money, and how you earn your money. And ask yourself, how can the fundamentals get me back on track. So um, series is going to go direct <clears throat> January 14th. <clears throat> Here you can see it's retrograde and boom, there it is going direct. And um, after that point, throughout the rest of January and into February, things are going to get untangled. And, um, and this is where that return to the fundamentals is going to play out. Okay. <clears throat> so, Julia, you've got news about Mercury, Mars, and Venus. What's that good stuff? 
I do, Capricorn. So I'll begin with Mercury. And on the 2nd of January, the very beginning of the month, it enters your second house of money. The second house represents not just your personal income, but also uh, all of your favorite possessions, such as a car or jewelry or collectible, collectibles. So when Mercury is in the second house, you could be spending a lot of time communicating or thinking about your money and stuff. Maybe you're strategizing about how to increase more money in your life expand business in some way or asking your boss for a raise. Um, and since the second house also rules our stuff, you might be, um, you know, more preoccupied with thinking about the things that you'd like to buy next or how to kind of how to increase the material sphere of your life. Then on January, January 14th, Mercury goes retrograde in your second. So when Mercury goes retrograde, it's a time of review. And since the second house is a house of money, you might be going through your receipts, you might be going through your tax and things might not be adding up. So be prepared to kind of mm. go over your finances again to make sure there aren't any loose ends. Then and if that sounds like it's connected to or maybe just uh, an extension of what's going on with Ceres, absolutely. Wow. I didn't even think about that, but it would yeah. particularly hit the Capricorns. You're absolutely right That's with that right. going on too in the background. <laughs> Um, in so March, start working on your taxes early. <laughs> oh yeah, good good advice for the Capricorns, and you know Capricorns are going to take up that advice pretty well because they're they're the responsible ones in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Mars next. That's that planet rules where you're going to find that drive that month, and it's also a planet that can be a bit conflict prone too. So Mars begins in your twelfth house, and the twelfth house is a very hidden house, um, and since Mars can represent and our anger, if you do get annoyed this month, you're going to be a lot more inclined to keeping it to yourself. Mars and the 12th can go two ways. Because the 12th is a hidden house, it could be a time where we just kind of pent up all of our anger and, and maybe it expresses in indirect ways or passive aggressive ways. Um, since the 12th is also the house of self undoing, it, it can show us how we sabotage ourselves. We can also sometimes overdo anger and just blow up too much. So try to just let things out slowly. You know, don't bottle it up too much and don't let it out too fast, but kind of find the middle ground with anger. Then on January 24th, Mars enters your first house of self. And this is going to be a high energy period for you um, because Mars is literally coming into your body, which represents the first house. So a really good use of this transit is to get out there, get active. Uh, it can be a wonderful time for a health routine, like um, doing some athletics or going to the gym. Um, now, when Mars is in the first, we're a lot better at standing up for our boundaries, but we can also go a little bit overboard, too. So try not to make mountains out of molehills. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, starts the month retrograde in your first house of self. Now, Venus in the first is usually very good for doing things to beautify your opinion. Uh, appearance. But since Venus is retrograde, I would say hold off on getting your hair done, uh, getting a new tattoo, going out and buying a lot of clothes, because you might want to go back and redo it. And what that means is if you get your hair done, maybe you don't like how the roots came out, you have to go and make a second appointment. And with tattoos, you know, that could be a lot more permanent. Um, so, you know, just kind of hold off and doing completely different things to your appearance, unless you're returning to some older style that you've had before. Like, you you know, because Venus retrogrades is a time for going back. You know, if you're going back to a haircut that maybe you had 10 years ago that you loved, that could be the good time for it, but not something for doing, not a good time for doing new and experimental things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also know there's a lot of relationship activity happening with Juno, and I will turn you to Jamie for that good news. Mm. So I want to go a little earlier in the month. Um... Oh, uh, yes, let's go earlier in the month. Let's go uh, right up here. So, so there is this gathering of planets in the first house, and this brings a lot of attention to you. And Julia's absolutely right in her advice about, you know, when Venus is retrograde, you know, because Venus is in your first house, you're going to want to do things to improve your appearance. But um, Venus retrograde is not always the best time to do something new. Um, so there's a lot of uh, sort of retrospection going on for you about that, about your appearance and about being attractive and so forth. Um, but meanwhile, Juno is, uh, is very busy um, in a much more positive place. And Venus signifies love and, uh, and attractiveness and magnetism, but Juno signifies commitment and marriage and um, 
uh, contracts and so forth. So this Juno conjunction with the sun, I like to call it commitment rapture day. And it's a really great, it happens pretty much every year, not always at the same time every year, but um, it's a great opportunity to just deepen commitment because um, when you do deepen a commitment, it's likely to go forward in a good way. And it's likely that you arrived at that commitment with everything that you needed to to commit to it, you know, feeling good about the follow through. So it's it's almost an irony that Venus should be retrograde causing this, you know, retrospection period while Juno is, you know, at the peak of goodness. Um, so um, so I think that there is a, a piece here about the importance of um, making any changes to your appearance and your attractiveness slowly and with great consideration because of Venus retrograde, but, but letting the benchmark be which relationships can I commit to and what do I want to look like for those relationships? That's where you find the, the, the benchmark, the determining factor of, um, of what changes to make around your appearance. So, um, and I wanna cap that off by saying that Venus goes direct at the end of the month. And then when Venus retrograde is over, that's gonna begin to bring some relief in our relationships, especially if you felt like I can't really be myself in these relationships and, um, and you break it off or you distance yourself from somebody that you just feel like you can't be yourself with. Um, I think that you'll find some relief uh around the 29th and after that okay so there are a couple of moons to talk about the first one is happening early in the month around january 2nd and that is a new moon in capricorn right here in your first house so this is going to really um it's going to bring up a lot of emotion for you uh we're calling this moon when toughing it out doesn't work anymore and this could be this could be the time when you decide that you've just been working too hard and that you're on the verge of burnout. This uh, new moon is square Chiron. New moons have a tendency to represent beginnings. This could be the time when you finally decide that you've been overdoing it and that you need to focus on healing yourself instead. And um, and that when there, you know, that that sort of brittle that that brittle carapace you know finally breaks like an eggshell and that's not even necessarily a bad thing it's certainly uncomfortable while it happens and it feels very personal and it feels like a, a ter, a, just a tremendous vulnerability uh and that's super uncomfortable but the second moon of this month brings some relief and some follow-through to that and it comes around the 17th and uh, we're calling this one relax and allow the break you've been working toward we find the full moon is in cancer it falls in your seventh house of partnerships of all kinds and so this could be an occasion in which you can just collapse into the arms of your beloved or your business partner or um you know a, a best friend or somebody that you feel is a, a nurture and a support for you and um and let let that person support you for a time and let yourself fill up with that nurture and like relax and bond and connect with that person and don't just use them for their good you know attention but but like um you know find your way to where you can have a more equal relationship with that person and give back not just take which is probably what you've been doing if you've been overworking so there's a caution right um okay then the last thing i want to tell you about is the seasonal change which is when the sun leaves the sign of capricorn and moves into the sign of aquarius which is your second house now we've been talking a lot of stuff about finances right and i uh, talked about series you know starting out in your sixth house and all of the worrying about whether you're being compensated for enough of your effort on the job uh, whether you need to ask for more money, perhaps, and uh, a return to the fundamentals. And then Julia talked about Mercury retrograding in your second house 
And that also can bring up worries about money and a whole restructuring and rethinking of your finances. And, um, and then when the sun arrives in this house, and you can also expect Venus is gonna follow and enter into this house and Mars eventually too. So over the next couple of months, you'll find more and more emphasis on your finances and it's also gonna get a lot better. Um, and so watch you know, the future month's horoscopes, especially when Venus enters in the second house, it's just gonna be really nice. And um, you'll probably, you know, you may experience financial windfalls or feel like, yeah, I really am ready to ask for more on the job. Um, but for now, just shining the spotlight of your high quality attention into your finances, starting later in the month after the 19th is, uh, is the way to go because it's your high quality attention that like sunlight helps things to grow in any area where the sun is traveling through. And when that's finances, well, that's where your attention needs to go. All right, well, that's what we have for you today, Capricorn. You can find this horoscope on our website, pandoraastrology.com in the horoscopes tab. And if this is your sun sign, definitely look up your rising sign because your rising sign horoscope will work a lot better. You can always find the news of the month on our website on the forecast page. You can get readings and take classes with us. And until next time, We'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.